Hello, in this episode I will be smartening up these details, ready for cavity bakes and just cleaning up the mesh. It's important that you do this because you'll get better masks when you go out to bake your materials. But you could possibly skip this step if you just want to go through the character creation process for experimentation and learning. I'm still not posing the model yet, but I've got a multi-res modifier so that I can add the detail and not worry too much and still be able to pose him a bit later on. Once I've posed the model, then I can come back to the sculpting and just touch it up a bit in case there's any pinching or creases. But having a multi-resolution modifier will mean that I can apply an armature to this model, which will be applied to the base of the model, not the multi-res detail. So it should be able to attach, all going well. So I have my multi-resolution modifier on. Don't make the mistake of applying this, otherwise we can't go up and down the levels. And my mesh is around a million and a half faces. And the multi-resolution modifier can handle that really well. It can go much higher than this actually, depending on your processor. I've got a i7 4th gen and it can go up to 20 million. What I do find though, it does lag slightly when I'm smoothing my mesh out. So when I was doing all that smoothing, it did lag slightly, both in Blender 2.79 and 2.8. But what we're about to go on to, which is adding those details, it's very quick at, especially when we get our alpha brushes in. The first thing I want to do is to smarten the shape up. So areas where there's creases like this, I want to smarten those up. I've still got mirror turned on and my mesh is still symmetrical. In fact, that is something I forgot to do, but it doesn't matter too much in this case, but I should have re-mirrored because instant mesh doesn't create a completely mirrored mesh, but it should be pretty close, so I don't think I'm too worried. So I'm just simply going around and smartening some of these creases up. It is still a cartoon, so it doesn't have to be super detailed. In the brush options for the crease, there is a pinch option, which will squeeze your two sides together more if you use the pinch option and that can be quite useful but I'm not really needing it in any places just yet. I was going to have a gum line around there, but I forgot about it before going to the multi-res. And you can see that it's causing trouble now, and you can start to see my faces when I try to change that. So I'm just going to leave it as is and paint that in. I think that'd be all right, to be honest. It's not a big deal. You can see I've got the tiniest of glitches there. Now this can be awkward to sort out, but that is hopefully something that's good about the multi-res. So we can go to layout, um, in fact modeling, sorry, and move into that area and see if we can't tidy it up manually. So I'll go to wireframe and then hopefully, yes, I can see that vertices sticking in there. Grab it. In fact, I can use the smooth option, which is under the vertex menu, smooth vertices back into solid mode and see how that's looking. Just press that a couple of times, I think. Yes, so it's actually not a quad mesh at that point. That might be what's causing the problem. Hopefully, if I delete the vertices, dissolve vertices, I should say, that might tidy it up. Let's go back to sculpt mode and see what a mess that's made. And now if I smooth it out, it's getting there. Let's bring the sculpt preview down, just there, smooth that out and then go back up, smooth it out a bit more, and we're getting somewhere. Any problem is it might have messed up the other side as well. That's not looking too bad. That's where I should have mirrored my mesh. That's where I've got a slight issue, but I think that's the only little glitch in the whole mesh. I haven't seen any others. You can really see my topology around here as well, but I am in flat shading and that will be smoothed out. You could go uh, higher resolution, I could subdivide this again, which I might do later, 
but at the moment I don't think it's necessary. I want to work quickly and I've got screen recording on which can sometimes cause a few problems. So that's why it's nice to be able to go down and up levels with the multi-resolution modifier and that's why you don't want to apply it otherwise you'll have a really dense mesh. There are other options if you don't want to use the multi-resolution modifier um, or you find it a bit too complicated at the moment because you're sort of starting out. You can do a detailed flood fill on your mesh. The only problem is that when you come to pose your model it may struggle to join the bones to a very detailed mesh. So you may want to pose the model first then do a detailed flood fill but then you will lose the option of symmetry. So he's looking okay at the moment just smartening up a few areas and that's fine nice simple details nothing too complicated and now I'm going to add a few surface details like I want that sort of I don't know dragons seem to have it this sort of big um, area at the front that's separated from the back and then I'll have a few spots and things down the back and a spot on his nose and we'll see how that looks. Before I do this I'm not sure whether that's the detail that Andy wants so I will save this as a different file and then save the new one and then offer both and see what he thinks. So with the crease brush selected I'm going to basically draw a line and at the moment I don't think that's enough of a crease it's more of a uh, draw tool style. If I go to my brush tools this is where we can use the curves. I've talked about this a touch before I think but it's not a pointy curve at the moment it's a rounded curve so I'm going to undo what I did there and go to the pointy curve and try that. I could always use the curve tool as well but at the moment this should be fine. So that's not too bad. I want it a little bit deeper so I'm actually going to up the strength slightly and I'm going to up the pinch as well. That looks pretty good. Just up the pinch a bit more. I keep forgetting to press control. <laughs> I might hide this area as well actually um, and use a box mask if I can get the hand in. Or box hide I should say. Try that again. Be good if it wasn't just a box hide. Be good if it was a sort of circle or a, you know like we have lasso hide would be good. Oh that didn't work at all. Yeah, it's not working. Glitch. <laughs> I'll try again and see if it works. Mm, it's sort of working. I can probably go from about here and hopefully that will work. Okay, so that's not worked well. What might help is if I go to stroke and then try smooth stroke. Okay, it's working better, but I've just got to get the shape right. I'm going to go to orthographic mode and front view. I think that might help me a touch. And I'm just going to turn down the radius of the smooth stroke to make it a little bit simpler for me. It's difficult to get them to line up when there's mirror on, but that seems to be okay and it's hidden a bit. So I should get away with that. Not sure how far to go up. I'm sort of looking at my reference images now and thinking about um, how far to go up. I think I'm going to go up to this sort of jawline and meet this line here. And I'll just try and tidy that up a bit. Turn the strength down. There we go. Give him a little belly button. The lower down the belly button, the fatter he'll look. And then the higher up it will kind of look like his body. Looks a bit too neat at the moment. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's probably a good finishing point for the one without any detail. So that's the kind of tidy up process that's necessary before you finalize your model. In the next episode, I'll go on to doing more detail with the alpha brushes. I do think it's important to clean up your meshes like this for the sort of end process. You'll get better bakes and your cavities will look much nicer and the normal maps can look nicer if you need normal maps for game engines. So I hope this is still helping you and I will see you next time.